You can make it all true You can make it all true You'll see La 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 It's easy La 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 You only need to know If you want to sing out Sing out And if you want to be free Be free Cause there's a man And we only sell 100% USDA organic produce. Yeah. Yes, I like working there. I let GMO farmers know it. Even the chemical companies know it. Go ahead and read the warnings they post for farmers about their own technology on their own websites. But I'll warn you, don't read them before bedtime. Those warnings will give you nightmares. And when you can, choose the non-GMO option. You can't believe what a difference it makes all throughout the system. That is how the movement grows and spreads. That is how you shape agricultural market demand. And markets, your consuming choices, ultimately will shape ag policy. Of course, if you don't believe me, notice just how many companies in the last two years have begun putting non-GMO labels on their products and labeling detail, giving detailed descriptions of the ingredients on their nutrition panels. So you know that if it's canola, it's organic canola. You know if it's soy, that it's organic soy. This is a huge effort on everyone's part. We're redeveloping a non-GMO supply chain that the national ag system is trying to quash. None of you have as much money as Monsanto, but together, across the country today, at the 400 plus rallies, we have a hundred times more money than Monsanto. When each of you demand non-GMO ingredients, the economy responds by being able to provide it. So remember, in this battle with Monsanto, it's critical to remember, we save, we win, by saving that one single farmer at a time. We save by giving that farmer the ability to choose non-GMO, organic, conventional, sustainable practices. So I've never met a springtime rally on these steps that I didn't like, but it was really going to matter, is every time we give one single additional farmer in the American heartland the ability to make that same choice, the choice to march against Monsanto towards safe and sustainable food. Thank you. Thanks so much for Alex's comments. Our pervasive, largely untested, unlabeled, and potentially unsafe. GE foods have not been tested for long-term impacts on human and environmental safety and health. The FDA does no independent testing and instead relies on data submitted by the biotech industry. What? The FDA and the USDA have abdicated their responsibility to keep America's food supply safe by approving untested, unlabeled, and potentially unsafe GE foods. Which is why we need federal legislation to require the labeling of GE Bill. foods. His meticulous research documents the health issues associated with GMOs and how biotech companies continue to mislead legislators, safety officials, and the public. Give a great welcome to Jeffrey Smith.
are we against Monsanto? Yes! Are we for life? Yes! Do we speak for humanity? Yes! Do we speak for the seeds? Yes! Do we speak for the animals? Yes! Do we speak for the insects? Yes! Do we speak for bacteria? Yes! Do we speak for fungi? Yes! Do we speak for life? Yes! We are part of 450 events going around the world today. In 45 countries and 47 states, we are part of humanity and life. Standing up to not life, standing up to Monsanto. Let's give ourselves a hand. 1999, when he heard Monsanto's consultant, Arthur Anderson Company, they were also Enron's consultant, describe how they worked with their client Monsanto. They asked them to describe their ideal future in 15 to 20 years, and they described a world in which 100% of all commercial seeds were genetically engineered and patented. Arthur Anderson worked backwards, worked backwards from that goal to create the strategy and tactics to achieve it. And since then, the desire, the desire has expanded beyond seeds. They want to introduce genetically engineered mosquitoes in Key West this year. They want to introduce genetically modified salmon. They want to genetically engineer out the mothering instinct of livestock. They want to genetically engineer our trees, our flowers, and even humans. They want to eliminate the products of the billions of years of evolution and replace it with designer genes and designer organisms designed for greater profit and control to Monsanto and its minions. Now let me tell you a little bit about this company that is trying to take over life. When their consultant reported that the PCBs being released in Anniston, Alabama were poisoning the rivers and poisoning the people, they had evidence and proof. The response was typical by the mindset of Monsanto. They refused to stop poisoning and they said in their confidential memo, we cannot afford to lose one dollar of business. I was told by a former Monsanto employee, three of his colleagues did the safety studies on the milk from cows treated with Monsanto's bovine growth hormone. They found so much cancer-promoting hormone, IGF-1, in the milk, the three Monsanto scientists refused to drink milk thereafter unless it was organic. One bought his own cow. He also said to me, when we found, when another set of colleagues found that rats were damaged from Monsanto's corn, they did not withdraw the corn. They rewrote the study to hide the effects. And he told me he knew that the percentage of corn in the diets of the rats was fairly low. Usually Monsanto doesn't test above 33%. And he was aware that the people of South Africa and Southern Africa use corn as staples. And he was concerned that if the rats on one third of their diet were showing these profound health dangers, what of the people of Southern Africa that use corn as two-thirds of their diet or more? Well, if you've seen the movie Genetic Roulette, there is a tragedy going on in South Africa. There was a farm where the farmer was complaining about the health of the cows and the pigs. Significant health damage. He took advice from a U.S veterinarian who said, don't plant GMOs again. 
So we switched from GM to non-GM corn, started feeding it to the animals, and they got better. And then ran out of the GM corn, non-GM corn, switched back to the GM corn that he had to buy in the market, and all the animals got worse, and then he planted enough It's Monsanto. And when I don't find a parking spot, it's Monsanto. When they finally got enough non-GMO corn to last year round, the animals were fine. But here's the side story that's the central story. The people living on the farm were constantly sick. He only needed 50 farm workers, but he kept 60, 20% more because so many were down with sickness. He was spending a fortune on anti-inflammatory drugs and painkillers. They had flu symptoms and cold symptoms and severe headaches. And about once a month or twice a month, the owner of the farm would speak to one of the farm workers and he would notice that an eye would go in one direction and another eye would go in another direction and the eyes lost the ability to track. And when he saw that, based on his experience, month after month after month, he knew that person would be dead in one or two days. Those farm workers were eating just the corn grown on the farm. So their corn, which was the majority of their diet, eaten three times a day, was 100% genetically engineered. So they were the canaries in the kitchen. They were the rats, they were the guinea pigs, they were us, humans, being fed Monsanto's meal as the majority of their food. And then when the animals, when the animals switched off the corn, so too did the humans, and their problems went away just like the animals. And then when they had to buy corn from the market, the problems came back until they were able to secure non-GM corn year-round. These people may have been eating more GMOs than anyone on earth because they were eating 100% GM corn grown on the farm, not the mix that's normally available from the market. But they are us, our allies. We see what happened to them, and we see what would happen to our future if 100% of our commercial seeds were genetically engineered and patented, just as Monsanto planned. Now, if we look specifically at what this stuff can do, there are two types of genetically modified traits that predominate. The most popular is called herbicide tolerance. That's the crops that drink poison. You pour the poisonous Roundup on the crops, it drinks the Roundup and deposits a portion in the soybean and the corn for you and me. Well, Roundup is directly endocrine disruptive. Animals that were fed Roundup-ready crops had damage to their testicles, uterus, ovaries. More than half of the babies died within three weeks. The babies were smaller. The babies were fewer. The babies had hair growth. That was a big one. The, the speakers couldn't handle what I'm about to say. All right. By the third generation on Roundup Ready soybeans, Most of the hamsters were sterile. They died at four or five times the rate, and many had hair growing in their mouths. We have not had three generations of humans on GM corn and soy, but we have the children who are most at risk, most vulnerable, and we see a massive increase in complicated diseases, often gut-related, and immune system-related, and behaviorally-related. And they're eating Roundup, 
which kills beneficial gut bacteria, which may shrink the cells in the intestines, causing leaky gut. It pulls and chelates with nutrients, making them unavailable. It's directly related to cancer and tumors. And it's in high concentrations of the food we're feeding to our children. And then we feed them the corn that's not only Roundup ready and drinking poison, this corn is designed to produce poison. It produces a toxin called Bt toxin. And the EPA said, oh, don't worry, our friends at Monsanto told us that the toxin has no effect on you and me, just insects. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. However, when they finally took the Bt toxin out of Monsanto's corn and exposed it to human cells, it poked holes in human cells just in the same way that it kills insects. And they found the Bt toxin inside the blood of 93% of pregnant women and in 80% of the unborn fetuses. And the unborn fetuses don't have blood-brain barriers developed, so that hole-punching toxin might end up in the brain of this generation of Americans, punching holes and causing er eruptions and disruptions in the guts because it can poke holes there, it can cause damage to the red blood cells, it might be related to the dramatic increase of gastrointestinal disorders that we've seen since GMOs were introduced. 40% increase in inflammatory bowel, Crohn's disease up, irritable bowel up. And when you talk to people who take GMOs out of their diet, what do they say? They get better. How many of you Remove GMOs from your diet and alleviated or improved some symptoms. Raise your hand. So during the next music break behind that yellow van, if you want to tell me your story on video, we're creating a new video, several of them, where people can report. And I've been asking audiences around the country to tell me what symptoms have improved. And almost every single time I speak of GMOs, there's people in the audience that say allergies have gone away. Yep. Gastrointestinal disorders have gone away. Nearly every talk, headaches. Sometimes kidney disease. Sometimes diabetes. Sometimes high blood pressure. Infertility. And when you talk to the thousands of practitioners, medical doctors, dietitians, nutritionists who are prescribing non-GMO diets, they describe these same categories as going away sometimes within two or three days. Now when humans get rid of GMOs, sometimes they have to buy organic, which is not allowed to intentionally use GMOs. Sometimes they'll eliminate processed foods. So there are cofactors which might be contributing to these symptoms, so you don't know whether the removal of GMOs alone is the cause of their improvement. But when the farmers and veterinarians describe when they take GM soy out of the diet and replace it with non-GM soy, or they take GM corn and replace it with non-GM corn, and the animals get better in two days, in three days, in five days, in these same categories, with no cofactors, we have more confidence. And when the American Academy of Environmental Medicine reviewed the animal feeding studies, which are the animals sentenced to eat GMOs, and compared it to the animals eating non-GMOs, they described these same categories of diseases and disorders as afflicting those eating the GMOs. And these same categories of diseases and disorders are on the rise in the U.S. population since GMOs were introduced. And these same categories of diseases and disorders would be predicted if you simply look at the two toxins associated with GMOs, the Roundup and the Bt toxin, not to mention all the other problems that GMOs have. We have now seen a, a nexus we have now seen converging lines of evidence that suggest that GMOs may be the most dangerous health impact that we're facing. And even then, even if it is, it is paling by comparison to the environmental impacts because once you release the GMOs into the environment, you cannot hire a company to recall it.
The genes already released today will outlast the effects of global warming and nuclear waste. The genes from corn have already contaminated the indigenous corn varieties in Mexico. We are bequeathing to our future generations, and not just to humans, but to all living beings. All living beings, all future generations, are going to suffer the folly of this company, Monsanto, who I believe, in its quieter, more reflective moments, asks itself, what would Darth Vader do? No shit. Are you ready for good news? Yeah! Nah, forget it. No, okay. don't get it. Here's the good news. So, I'm part of a family here. You may be part of that family. We call ourselves Dragon Slayers. And the dragon is Monsanto. And remember in the old days when, the, when they used to kill dragons, there was always a, a chink in the armor. You know that the, the dragon would fly off and the, the guy would have the arrow and he'd say, ah, the armor's missing right there. And of course he'd win and the dragon, well, that was when the dragons were bad, etc. So what is the chink in the armor? Where is the vulnerability of Monsanto? In a dollar bill! So now, it's not in Washington, D.C. Let's get that established. Yeah, really. The person who was in charge of policy at the FDA when the GMO policy was created was Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney. He then became Monsanto's chief lobbyist and vice president. Now he's back at the FDA in the Obama administration as the U.S. Food Safety Czar. And his policy said no testing was necessary, no labeling was necessary, because we don't see any difference between GMOs and non-GMOs, and that was a lie. The thousands of documents made public from lawsuits showed the, over, the overwhelming consensus among the scientists working at the FDA was exactly the opposite, that GMOs were different and dangerous. So that was a lie. But we know from that and many other experiences and examples that we don't see a chink in the armor in Washington. We don't see a chink in the armor in the mainstream farm community because where do they get the information? They get it from the seed dealers, Monsanto. They get it from the chemical dealers, Monsanto. They get it from the land-grant universities that are funded by Monsanto. They get it from the agricultural extension agents that come from those land-grant universities that are funded by Monsanto. They get it from the, the farm radio, which is funded by Monsanto. They get it from the farm journals, which is funded by Monsanto. And they get it from the USDA, which, marks lock, which is marches lockstep with Monsanto. So we can't find the chink in the armor by trying to convince all the farmers in America that what they're hearing from all those other places is wrong. We can't find the chink in the armor in academia where if you step and try and even criticize GMOs, you may lose your job. And if you try and do research on GMOs, you can't get the seed because they're patented. You can't get it published in the United States, maybe not overseas, and if you do publish it, you will be attacked, personally attacked, which is why there's almost no research done on GMOs from independent scientists. So, research and academia, it is not their chink in the armor. But let me describe what happened to Monsanto's fortunes in Europe in 1999. Remember, when I started this, I said my friend saw Monsanto's consultant describe a plan to replace nature, and he said it was the most arrogant statement he'd ever seen in his life. He was devastated, but it was replaced later that afternoon with a yet more arrogant statement. Another company projected a 95% replacement of all commercial seeds within five years. So this was 1999. By 2004, they wanted to have everything, virtually everything, on your plate genetically engineered. And they had the schedule lined up to do it. So what happened? The chink in the armor happened. Three weeks later, the gag order was lifted on a scientist who had been gagged because he discovered that GMOs are inherently dangerous. And what happened? This was in England. And there, 
The papers went wild. More than 700 articles were written on GMOs within a month. Within 10 weeks, the tipping point of consumer rejection was achieved. Unilever was the first and said, no more GMOs. Then Nestle jumped on and said, no more GMOs. Then virtually every food company in Europe said, no more GMOs in, in Europe. It was not the European Commission. It was not the government that banned GMOs in Europe. GMOs are banned in Europe by Nestle's, by Unilever, by McDonald's, by Burger King, wow. by Walmart. Wow. Wow. And why? It is because we consumers, we who eat, we who purchase, we who make decisions, we are at the top of the food chain and we we give dictation to the market. Now, it didn't happen in 1999 in the United States. Project Censor described that whole affair as one of the 10 most underreported events in the United States. We did see a tipping point against bovine growth hormone kicked out of Walmart, Starbucks, Yoplait, Dan, and most American dairies when we started educating moms that their kids were at higher risks of cancer with these high IGF-1 levels in the milk that caused even Monsanto scientists to refuse to drink milk thereafter. So we saw a tipping point. Now let's think together for just a moment because here is the really good news and then even better. So the really good news is, it is not a vote. We don't need to have 51% of Americans stopping to eat GMOs so that the craft food manager said, well, we lost half of our market share, we better make a change. No, they won't wait. If they see any drop whatsoever in market share that they can attribute to growing sentiment against GMOs in the United States, they won't hold on to it and say, low GMOs. They won't hold on to GMOs for those people who wake up every day yearning for their daily dose of BT toxin and Roundup. There's no consumer benefits. If they see a drop, if they see a rapidly expanding anti-GMO consumer movement that is making people choose non-GMO, they will get rid of GMOs. We think as little as 5% of U.S. shoppers avoiding GMO ingredients can do it. So, if we only need about 15 million Americans, 5.6 million households to avoid GMOs, to cause the change in the pocketbook calculations, to create the industry, food industry sell signal saying divest of GMOs, if that's all we need, then we actually are in the driver's seat. We are in the driver's seat. We don't have to ask the Obama administration for a bail on this one. We are in the driver's seat. If we only need 15 million Americans to stop eating, now don't tell me, oh, you'll never get Americans to change their diet. No, the couch potato, junk food eating American that hasn't related food to health, he'll never know he's eating GMOs, he'll never know we got rid of it for him. <laughs> to convince anyone who is resistant to this knowledge. There, is enough, there are enough people out there who want the information that we have. There are, if we're looking for 15 million, there's 28 million Americans that buy organic on a regular basis. There are more moms and young kids that will protect their kids. There are more sick people that will stop eating GMOs when they realize what happened. There are more doctors who will tell the sick people. And there are more religious people who will realize what's going on and that GMO really means God move over and they want none of it. Now we know how to change people's diet. How many people have seen the movie Genetic Roulette? Raise your hand. Okay. Now, how many of you, and applaud if it's true, decided to be much more vigilant at avoiding GMOs before the credits rolled? But we 
know that that works because we have done pre and post tests. We have developed the materials to change people's diet, especially among the receptive. So, we don't have to say boycott Monsanto because of corporate control and patents. We can say, are you sure you want to eat that corn chip that's made of BT toxin and the BT genes might transfer to your gut bacteria, turning them into living pesticide factories, causing this BT toxin which pokes holes in the cell walls of your guts, which might drill holes to get into, get into causing leaky gut, and leaky gut is linked to cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, uh, autoimmune disease, allergies, etc., inflammation. Are you sure you want to eat the genetically engineered corn chip, which is also linked to Roundup, and Roundup has been recently linked to cancer, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, anorexia nervosa, multiple sclerosis, aggression, depression, and you name it. Are you sure you want to eat the corn chip? Or do you want to eat the organic corn chip? I just got vitamin cottage from Alan. I think you want to eat the organic corn chip. So it's not hard to change people's diet, especially if they're awake and aware and wanting. So when we give people our non-GMO shopping guide at non-gmoshoppingguide.com or the iPhone application Shop No GMO, they say, great, I want to share this with my... I want to share this with my loved ones because I want to keep them alive too. So, I told you I'd give you the good news and then I would top it off. Here's the topper. Here's the topper. We're winning. Yes. I mean, look around. This would not have happened seven years ago, five years ago. I was the, I've been the only one, I think, traveling in the United States, crisscrossing it every year for 10 years. I have never seen this type of awakening in the United States, with 27 states introducing labeling bills, with California and Washington introducing ballot initiatives. The number of products that are now Boasting the label non-GMO has risen, t and the sales have risen 26% in 2012, far outpacing any other claim. When the Whole Foods president was interviewed by USA Today, he said when a product switches to non-GMO project verified, it increases sales by 15 to 30%. We have heard that a person in the mainstream food industry told someone, I think the U.S. consumers have hit a tipping point on the GMO issue. This year, we expect some mainstream food companies to be announcing that their products are non-GMO project verified. And this is the gauntlet that's being thrown down to the rest of the food industry. what I want to leave you with. It is easy. Monsanto again. I was just about to say it's easy to hate Monsanto, but they didn't want me to say that. It is so easy to hate Monsanto. You can pick a poison over the last decades. You can pick their arrogance. You can pick their plans. And it creates energy. And I feel the energy today. But I want to suggest that the energy is power to be directed. And that when you leave here and you go back to your own food that you eat and you go back to your cupboard or you go order something, be informed. Be informed that by choosing non-GMO, you are not only protecting yourselves, but you are establishing the activism activity that will take down Monsanto. It's already happening. It's already started. We have a movement. We have 47 states in, in this country right now having rallies like this. 250 cities around the world, 450 events. And this is not, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have 
thousands of doctors prescribing non-GMO diets to tens or hundreds of thousands of people who get better and they're telling their friends. So to borrow a phrase from Paul Hawken, we who are the Earth's immune system, we who are rising up to protect ourselves, to protect, our, to our protect humanity, to protect all living beings, I'll leave you with this thought. When in history have humans had the capacity to do so much good as to stop GMOs? Because never before has a technology been released that can negatively influence all living beings and all future generations. This may be our duty, but this is also an opportunity. This is an opportunity to do more good than any of our ancestors, than any of past humanity has had the opportunity to do. We have the opportunity to protect the entire future of Earth. Thank you. Thank you.